All right, so this first section, we're going into 11.5. Okay, funny. Yes. We're going to talk about volume of pyramids and cones. So before I give you the formula, I want, to, I want us to think about it for a second, and then I have a, a little demonstration, a little visual thing that we'll do. So we know that a pyramid is, is, is like a, a prism, but we've taken some parts of it away. It has a base, it has a height. If we, if we took a prism and we chopped some pieces off, we would get a pyramid. So does anyone have an idea of how the volume of a pyramid and the volume of a prism with the same base and the same height would be related. Any anyone want to guess? Make a make a conjecture. So when we if we if we took well it can't be the same because we, if we take a prism with two bases and height to make a pyramid we'd have to chop some parts of it off to get the vertex. So any, anyone want to guess how much if we chop chop the parts of a prism off to get to get a prism so chop chop the parts of a prism off to get a pyramid how much of the volume of that prism would be left? What's that? It, it's fine. You just make a guess. It's fine. <laughs> two thirds. Half. Half. Two thirds. A fourth. Those are three fourths. Three fourths. Three fourths. That's the reasonable guesses. Um, so so let me let me show you this this demonstration. All right. So what I have here is three pyramids. So we have the base. And the height. Those are the height. And each of those has the same base and the same height. So the height goes up. So these are uh, oblique pyramids. And now what we're going to do is, is fold this, this thing up. So we're just bringing those together. We're folding this one along here and these two along that line. So we're bringing them together. And they come together perfectly to form a cube. And this cube, this rectangular prism, has the same base and the same height as each of the pyramids. So the base and the height. So the, the prism that we made has the same base and the same height as the pyramids. So each one of those pyramids is going to be how much of the volume of that rectangular prism? One third. One third. And it turns out, it turns out that that is true for any pyramid and its related prism. So our volume of any pyramid Cavalieri's principle works for pyramids also. We could make a slanted pyramid. We're not changing how much space it takes up. The volume of any pyramid the volume is the base, area of the base, times the height divided by 3. And our unit's going to be cubic units. And capital B is the area of the base and H equals the height of the pyramid. And we, I, I, I sometimes write this as one third B times H. One third and dividing by three are the same thing. So the volume of a pyramid is one third the volume of the prism with the same base and the same height. So a nice easy formula to use. And 
I just want to point out that for an oblique pyramid, sometimes if we have, I'm going to draw an oblique pyramid here. If that's my pyramid, so it's slanted, we can find the height. Let me make that last one a little better. We find the height outside the pyramid. So for an oblique pyramid, the height can be outside the pyramid. It doesn't go through the middle. For a regular pyramid, the height, the altitude goes straight into the middle of the base. But for an oblique pyramid, it can be outside. Or for that demonstration that we did, the height was along one side. <coughs> All right, so nice, nice, easy formula. So let's look at an example. Questions so far? And again, there's that area of the base. We have to find the area of some shape, some polygon that makes up the base. Uh, here's our example. Nice, oh, I, let me grab this. I want to grab a, a picture. Ms. Lingren, how was your, um, how, was, how was it? So from my perspective, I probably made the right choice. Yeah. The okay. person from the depart your department that went with uh. her <laughs> four wholeheartedly. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there's our pyramid uh, square pyramid. So there's my square pyramid, and I'm going to say, let me make sure I'm going to match up with what I gave you. Now. Okay, yes. And we want uh, we want the volume to the nearest cubic foot. So we're rounded to the nearest whole number. Um, and this side of the base, 755.5. Feet. And I'm going to draw in this segment from the vertex down to the base. And that is going to be uh, 485 feet. All right, so that segment that I drew there from the vertex the base. Is that the height to, or the slant height? The blue segment there. That's the height. Okay, we, we're, it's nice when they give us the height. We don't have to figure anything else about that. Um, well, we need the area of the base. Area of the base, capital B. The base is a square. So how do we find the area of that base? If we know one side, 755.5. Multi multiply that by itself. We square it. 755 times 755. Base times height. So we get uh, 755.5 squared. And that's a pretty big number. Uh, 570780.25. And we know the height is 485, so our volume. And I think, if I remember correctly, these are the dimensions of the, the Great Pyramid in Egypt. So this would be the volume of that pyramid. Um, so we get the volume is 485 times 570780.25, and we're going to divide that by 3. And when I plug that in my calculator, I get that the volume is about, when I round it to the nearest whole cubic foot, 92,276,140 cubic feet. A lot of space in there for 
to Pharaoh. Questions? All right, let's look at one other example. This one will have just a slightly different setup. So there's my pyramid. Let me make that a little bigger. There we go. And for this one, it's again, it's a square pyramid. I'm going to say this is 18 yards, the base edge. And I'm going to mark this segment. And we're going to say that segment is 15 yards. Now the segment they give us in this problem, what what is that for our pyramid? They give us the slant height. So we need to figure out, we need the height for this one. So what are we going to do? We're we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So let's draw in. There's my height. I drew that in there. And I'm going to connect that across the middle of the base there to the to where the slant height meets the base. There's my height. I can use the Pythagorean theorem. Let me redraw that triangle so we can look at it face face on. There's the height, um, there's a slant height, and here is the segment that I drew across the base. We know the slant height is 15. We're looking for the height. And how far is it from the, the height to the, where the slant height meets the base edge? Here, how do we figure that out? Well, for a regular pyramid, the height goes right into the middle of the base. So how far is it going to be from the, where the height meets the base to where the slant height meets the base edge? Nine. Nine. Thank you. Halfway across the base. So that's going to be nine. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem. This time, since we're not solving for the slant height, it, the setup is a little different. So I'm just labeling my sides A, B, and C. The slant height is C. So H squared plus 9 squared equals 15 squared. So we're not solving for C. We're solving for either the A or the B side. Um, so H squared equals 81, or H squared plus 81, sorry, equals 15 squared, 1 Sorry, 225. Subtract 81 from both sides. 8 squared is 144. And this turns out to be a nice Pythagorean triple. Take the square root of both sides. H equals 12. Well, now we're, now we're set. The area of the base, it's a square. So the area of the base, capital B, is 18 squared, which is 324. So my volume is area of the base, 324, times the height, divided by 3. And I get, when I plug that in my calculator, 1,296 cubic yards. One time I got 10 yards, 10 cubic yards of soil delivered to my house. We were doing work on our yard, and it was way too much. Did you do the math right on the front end? I thought so, but I had to measure the volume. I was trying to figure out the volume of the space we were trying to fill in. 
I actually, I ordered less than the people. They said, oh, no, I think you'll need this much. It was so much dirt. I hauled dirt for so long. It was crazy. So 10 cubic yards is a lot of, this, this would be, it would take a lot of dirt to fill that pyramid up. All right, questions? Okay, let's talk about cones. Volume of any cone. Well, we said last time that cones were essentially curvy pyramids. Our surface area formula for a cone was exactly the same, the lateral area plus the base area. The cone is a portion of a cylinder. If we take a cylinder and we cut a portion away, we end up with a cone. So based on the fact that cones are curvy pyramids, what are you going to guess we're going to say the volume of a cone is? How much of a, of a cylinder do you think the volume of a cone is going to be if it's like a, if it's like a pyramid? A third. So we're going to say the volume, it's the same, really the same thing. The volume is the area of the base times the height divided by three cubic units. And for a cone, what is the base? A circle. So our area of our base is going to be pi r squared h divided by three cubic units. R equals the radius of the base. Uh, H equals the height. And for our other formula, B is the area of the base for the top formula. So usually with, with cones, you'll know the, you'll, you'll be given the radius and the height or some information to figure out the radius and the height. And this works for an oblique cone as well. It can be any cone. So let's look at one example with a cone, because the cones, the, the problems are essentially the same as the problems for, for pyramids. We just don't have to worry as much about the area of the base. So here's my, here's my cone. And I'm going to say that the distance across here is 8 centimeters. And along here is 11 centimeters, so along the side. And we want to find the volume. If the problem doesn't say volume in terms of pi or the round to the tenth, I would just automatically round to the tenth if the problem doesn't specify. All right. So we need the radius and the height. Can we figure out the radius? R equals 4. We have the diameter there. So r equals 4 centimeters. Do we have the height here or the slant height? We have the slant height. How are we going to figure out the height? Make a triangle. There's my height. Just draw right down the middle of the cone. We have a nice right triangle. So I'm going to say, if I label it, I'll call h the h side a, the 11 side b, or sorry, c and the four side b. So I have h squared plus four squared equals 11 squared. So h squared plus 16 equals 121. Subtract 16 and I get h squared equals uh, 105. Take the square root of both sides and h is about 10.25. And now we're set, the volume is pi times 
times the radius, 4 squared, times the height, 10.25, and we're going to divide that by 3. And when I calculate that out, I would just, you could plug it in your calculator just like that, pi times 4 squared times 10.25 divided by 3. Or you could do 4 squared times 10.25 times pi, divide all that by 3. Plug that in my calculator and I get 171.7 cubic centimeters. Okay, questions on cones? All right, so the last of our shapes, let's talk about spheres. So this is section 11.6. Surface area. And volume of spheres. Nice thing about spheres is there's not not that much to them. So there's not a lot of vocabulary to learn here. A sphere. Is a sphere a polyhedron? No, sphere is not made up of polygons. So what we're going to say for a sphere is a sphere is a three-dimensional, it's a curved surface. It's not much else we can say about it. It's a curved surface. The definition of a sphere, we talked about the definition of a circle, I want to, we'll, we'll relate them a little more later. This, a sphere is all points that are the same distance from the center point. So the definition of a sphere is exactly the same as the definition of a circle. We said that the circle is in a plane, but it's all the points that are the same distance from a center. And what do we call the distance? The distance from the center is the radius. The distance is the radius. So really the only piece of information that we need about a sphere is the radius. That tells us everything we need to know. Now it's kind of complicated to show, not kind of, it's fairly complicated to show where the formulas for the surface area and volume uh, of a sphere come from. We can't draw a net. Well, we can, we can draw a net, but the nets are all curved. So, so the Formulas, it's a little more complicated where they come from, so we're just going to tell you what they are. Um, let me pull up a picture of a sphere. There's my sphere. The way I usually draw a sphere by hand is I do a circle, and then you could do kind of a dotted line around the middle just to show that it's three-dimensional. Um, so on my picture here, from the center, there's my center. This is my radius from the center to the, to the sphere. All the way across would be a diameter. And if we cut a circle right through the center, that t would be it, the distance around that circle would be the circumference. You will have problems in your book that ask you or talk about a hemisphere. Do we know what a hemisphere is? So on the globe, when we talk about the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, what, what are we talking about? Half. A hemisphere is half a sphere. And uh, 
Um, and you know the Dodge cars and trucks? They have the engines they call the Hemis. The reason they call them Hemis is the, the top of the cylinder is in the shape of a hemisphere. The top of the, the piston is curved up like a hemisphere. That gives them a little more, they're able to get a little more volume in the, in the cylinder than if it were just flat. So that's why they call them hemis, because the cylinders are hemispherical at the top. A little interesting tidbit there. Related to real life. Related to real life. Well, we all, you, you all should start driving with cars that have normal, very small engines, so don't go very fast. All right. Our formulas. The volume. Volume of a sphere. Volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And our units are cubic units. And r is the radius of the sphere. This is the same as writing 4 pi r cubed all divided by 3 cubic units. The surface area. Of a sphere. Very similar formula. SA for surface area is 4 pi r squared. Square unit. So not very complicated formulas. All we all we need to know is the radius. And we're set. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples. There's really not much to sphere. The radius is, is the key piece of information. All right, so a ball has diameter of 2.9 inches. We want to know what is the surface area. They might ask you, a baseball has a diameter of 2.9 inches. How much leather do you need to cover it? Well, the cover is talking about the surface area. They want to know the area of the, the, the leather that you need to cover, cover this. All right, so the diameter is 2.9 inches. We need the radius. But we can find the radius, right? The radius is half the diameter. 2.9 by, divided by 2 is 1.45 inches and now we can plug this into our formula the volume is four thirds pi times one point four five cubed. And let me show you uh, in your calculator how you can, how I would plug this in. You can plug it in. Oh, uh, we, we didn't want the volume, did we? No? Well, that would be, if you needed to find the volume, that's how you would find the volume. Um, let me add this. Surface area and volume. Volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed. Let me show you in your calculator how I would, I would plug that in. So 4 pi r cubed is 
pi, where's my pi button here? Can't remember on this calculator. On the left, there it is. 4 pi times um, 1.45. And to do cubed, you do this little carrot, this up arrow. That's 4 times 1.45 cubed. 4 pi times 1.45 cubed. I'll hit enter. That gives me 38.31, and I divide that by 3. And I get 12.77 cubic inches. The surface area is what the original problem asked for. Surface area is um, 4 pi r squared, 4 pi times 1.45 squared. Plug that in your calculator just like that. 4 times pi times 1.45 squared. And I get 26.42 square inches. Questions there, Maddie. Was that was that one in your notes? So the the sheet that I have, there's a couple of the examples are not there. Yes, I just have I have I just have one of the I have one sphere. Yeah. With a radius have, of. And then I have another sphere that isn't labeled with any example number. Okay. All right. So there's a couple of things that are missing out of there. Then I apologize. All right, um, let's look at one more example because I want to show you how to do a, a, an operation with your, with your calculator that will come up in this chapter. We have a sphere with a volume of 1,000 cubic meters. We want to know the surface area. We have the volume, we want to figure out the surface area. So for a sphere, what we always need for a sphere, we need the radius. We need the radius. Well, we're going to use our volume formula to find the radius. We know the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, they tell us the volume. So we can write an equation. 1,000 is the volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we're going to use that to solve for the radius. All right. How do I get rid of, I want to get the radius r cubed, I want to get that by itself. How do I get rid of that 3 in the denominator? Multiply everything by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 3, and I get 3,000, didn't want to keep that in blue, there we go, 3,000 equals, the 3's cancel on that side, 4 pi r cubed. <clears throat> I want to get the r cubed by itself. Well, what is a 4 pi doing to the r cubed? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Multiplying. So how do we undo multiplication? Divide. I'm going to divide both sides by 4 pi. 4 pi is just a number. 4 times pi is 12 point something. So when I do that, I get r cubed. Uh, on this side, the 4 pi's cancel. 3,000 divided by 4 pi, I'm just going to plug that into my calculator. So I can plug it in just like that. Um, I'll show you what I would do. 3,000 divided by, and in parentheses, I would say 4 pi. And I get 238.73. So 
So R cubed is 238.73. Now I need to get, I need to undo that cube. How do I undo a cube? We do the cubed root. Just like we undo a square by doing a square root, we undo a cube by doing a cube root. So I want to show you how to do a cube root on your calculator. So we need to take the cube root of 238.73. So what I'm going to do is on your calculator, most of your calculators are just like this. You're going to have a button here that says X and then the little square root sign. That X tells me what root to take. So I'm going to say 3 because we want the cubed root. And then I'm going to hit that button that says X with the little square root sign. So here is the second caret button. So this tells me the cube root. And my number was 238.73. I get 6.203. And the cube root is the number so that if I multiply 6.203, by itself three times, 6.203 times 6.203 times 6.203, I would get 638.27. If you, if you need help figuring out where the cube root button is on your calculator, how to take a cube root on your calculator, Ms. Lehman or I can help you. All right, so back to our problem. R, we figured out by taking a cube root, is... Uh, 6.2. I'll just round to the tenth. So my radius is 6.2. Now we can use our surface area formula. The surface area is 4 pi times 6.2 squared. I plug it in my calculator just like that and I get 483.1 square meters. All right, questions. So the nice thing for about a spear, for a spear, the radius is the key. You need the radius and your set. All right, our homework from section 11.5 is page 730, number... 5 through 32, let me, make it, let me change it, 6 through 32, even. Some students it really bothers when I say 5 through 32 even. Uh, this is due end of class. And from 11.6, the sphere homework, page 736, number 6 through 26, even, and then 32 through 42, even. And that'll be due Monday.